have you with us tonight. Thank you for taking the time. It's great Let's to be with start you. with with asking you: Can the mayor or council do anything over the course of the next ten days to change this course of an emergency financial manager being appointed? Well, I'm open-minded to that. That's the point of having an appeals period. Well, I would say it's a challenging situation, though. If you look at the financial review team report, it really points out how devastating the finances of the city are and that real change needs to happen to turn it around, in addition to better services for the citizens. My understanding, if they call for a review, though, in a hearing on the 12th, it is not to present a new plan during that hearing that would be considered. That is just to say that maybe the review team overlooked something during the review process, correct? So That's they would have to present a plan to you in the next 10 days that would make you change your mind? Yeah, the hearing itself is geared to say there's something incorrect in the report they gave me, and that's the focus of that. But besides that, I'm open-minded, because I don't want to view it as to say, let's close off discussion, let's be open-minded, let's have these 10 days, but I would say it is 10 days. Okay. Now, Governor, let me ask you this. A lot of people have said this both nationally and here locally. Are you stepping on the rights of the people, the democratic rights of the people? Now, I know Michigan voted down the emergency manager law in November. You signed a revised version uh, in December that takes effect at the end of this month. What do you say who, to the people who are angry, even Reverend Wendell Anthony of the NAACP, who says you're stepping on the democratic rights of the people? Well, if you look at it, the law we're operating under right now goes back to Governor Blanchard. This goes back decades. So this has been well established. This has been used multiple times by Republican and Democratic governors. It's been there a long time. And the thing is, is this is a crisis. This is not normal times. And the point is, it's not a takeover. It's Detroit, Michigan. It's not Detroit versus Michigan. And shouldn't we have everyone coming together that can be part of the solution to make that solution happen? Do you feel people feel that way, that we can come together, both the mayor, the city council, and the state of Michigan? Well, I think the citizens of Detroit want to see a solution. I think the citizens of Michigan do, and that's who we work for. That's who our customers are, and I want to deliver results to my customer. If one is appointed, my understanding is it's for an 18-month term. There's a lot of work to be done in the city. Are you, is that a realistic time frame that, that real results can happen in that time? Yeah, it could be shorter or longer. The 18 months is really, at, after 18 months, the city council has the ability to say they want them to leave, whoever that may be if there's an emergency manager. But what I would say is a lot could get done. And there is a lot to do. There's a short-term financial crisis. There's the long-term debt issue that needs to be resolved, and a lot could be done on that. Structural solutions, but also better services to citizens. Because this isn't about numbers. This is about people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Governor, let's have you pause for just a second. We do want to hear reaction from sure. uh, Council President Charles Pugh. Let's listen. We're not in danger of not being able to you know, pay the debt service on our bonds. We are not in danger of running out of cash. So what is the real issue now? that we want to know what's the real urgency he was talking there about kind of what's the hurry they're, they're you know they feel like they could have more time they're they're okay until June or whatnot so what is your answer to that what is the hurry why not give the city more time well if you stop and look at we did a consent agreement back in April and when you look at the 21 items we had to work on a lot of them didn't even get started until September that was a crisis back then and it begs the question, and we needed to work on those things back in April. Mm -hmm. We're running out of time here to keep the city going in a positive, constructive way. So let's solve these problems. Let's move forward, and let's create that sense of urgency, but also opportunity to say it's about teamwork, enough fighting, enough arguing. Let's show results. So let's talk about teamwork for a second, because you, you talk about the emergency financial manager in Pontiac. We heard from the mayor last night and the emergency yeah. financial manager. And the mayor in Pontiac actually works as a consultant with the EFM. But the city council in Pontiac, they're part-time. They still come in. They don't make any money. Our Detroit City Council, they depend on that paycheck. If they don't have a paycheck, what do you expect the city council and the mayor to do here in Detroit with an EFM? Well, again, this is one of the open things, but I appreciate the piece you did last night. I saw it. And it was great to show how a mayor and an EM can work together. And the city council is still having meetings. So again, a lot of it is the, the, up to the city council and mayor as to how they want to define their role. If they want to be constructive partners, if they want to provide solutions, again, even if they want to be critical, but if they're providing an alternative solution, that's great. If it's simply to complain and not like things, that doesn't help solve a problem. You've been having a conversation with the mayor. He said he talked yeah. to you by phone. Do you think the mayor will work with an EFM in the city of Detroit, perhaps as a consultant? I, I 
really hope so. And I believe we're on a path to hopefully make that happen because I've had a good relationship with the mayor and the mayor wants to do the best for the city. So how can we make that happen? And I hope we're on that path. A lot of people are concerned about uh, union contracts and the idea that an EFM, EFM could come in and literally rip them up. There's real fear there. What is the process there? Should union workers be concerned about that possibility? Well, that's one of the issues that have already happened. The, the city did a lot of those things. And I appreciate the efforts of the mayor and the city council over the last few months. That's one area they were fairly active on and making major improvements. The question is, is we need to get to the point of where we can say we're done having to deal with those things and give better certainty to workers so they know they can just focus on a positive Detroit, growing Detroit. And hopefully we can do that through this time period. Now, get Governor, answers so people can move forward. Absolutely. Governor, I watched your press conference today yeah. and I heard a gentleman stand up and he said, uh, we need jobs in the city of Detroit. We need tax revenue. What about when the bridge is built, for example? He said, will Detroiters get those jobs? How will we get Detroit back to work so we can have more money? Yeah. And I've already started that discussion with both people that could be potential contractors, but also the skilled trades people. I appreciate the union people in that discussion to say, how can we get training in Detroit and how can we look at doing that sooner rather than later? Instead of waiting for the project to say, now we need the people, we may need to train a lot of people and have them available when that project comes. And so let's work on that now. Talk Those are good jobs. The top candidate in your, in your town hall meeting, essentially, that you had today when you made this announcement, you talked about an outstanding candidate. I guess I wonder, why can't we know who this person is uh, at this point? Because in a lot of respects, the process isn't over because I want to respect the appeals period. So I don't view it appropriate to talk about who that person is when it's not clear that person's even going to come here. Was it so tough really to get, get somebody? If you have someone, I mean, this is just an overwhelming job in the city. And I would tend to think, and I could be wrong, but that there have to have had been some people who said, I I'm not taking this I out. don't want to jump into the fire because it's right. Exactly. No, this is one of the most challenging positions in the entire United States, assuming it moves forward. And I appreciate that, and I didn't sugarcoat that when I talked to candidates. I said, you really have to have a passion to help people and do it for the right reasons, because this will be a great challenge. But the thing is, it's not just one person. This is the point, it's not just the EM solving this problem. It's the mayor, the city council, all layers of government. I'm happy to be part of it. I hope the public is part of coming to solutions to say, isn't it time to stop the 50, 60 year decline? By working together, by solving problems, and finally getting to that Detroit where it's moving forward in a positive way. And people in the neighborhoods can say good stuff is going on. You, you got that right. Let's ask you to pause <laughs> one more second. Santiel Jenkins is another city council member sounding off in the governor's declaration, and this is what she told 7 Action News. The plan that we keep hearing about that isn't working, it's a state plan. It's not a city plan. The cash flow statements that have been produced were produced by a, a firm the state sent here. So help us understand why if the plan you forced us to adopt is not working now, what you're going to do differently. You may say the nicer version. You know, she's talking there about this plan she feels like is a state plan, not a city plan. To bring more revenue to the city. Right. So it's a state plan that hasn't worked and help us understand help us understand that and how this is going to be better. Well, one of the starting points uh, if an emergency managers come in is they're going to look at the consent agreement. They had 21 different action items. I didn't come up with those items. The city did with us. So these are items that the city came forward, the city council and the mayor agreed to to say these things needed to be done. So just the opposite, very much the foundation of this program is a foundation that the city has already signed up for to, that they've agreed that needs to be done. And so I, let's do them. But, but real quickly, Council President Pugh said, you know, the city is no longer in a cash crisis. They've made steps with the consent agreement and they're moving forward. So again, he's saying, what is the rush right now? Well, if you stop and look at, you look at the financial review team report, mm -hmm. um, the deficit could be $100 million towards the end of the fiscal year here. Um, a lot of one-time things are required to get there. There's a lot of issues. Plus, there's $14 billion of long-term so liabilities. He's wrong. Well, again, I, if you look at the numbers, this is a staggering amount of debt to deal with and a cash crisis. Let's get this thing working. Fourteen billion long term yeah. is what the report said. Governor Snyder, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about we this tonight. We appreciate your time yeah. as always. Thank we know you. you're a busy man.